chapter 10 is called circles. Here's some circles. So first some just uh, just some quick vocab. So this is the center of the circle. Um, so I'm not even going to write that down. And you probably know what the diameter and the radius is, but I'm going to put it in anyway. The diameter um, is a line segment that goes from one end of the circle to the other. It goes passes through the center. So it's the whole distance across. Um, and then a radius would be um, the distance from the center of the circle to any point on the outside of the, a circle. Okay, so this one's the diameter. And this one would be the radius. Okay, hope you can see that okay. Okay, and then some uh, newer vocab. So if you take any two points on a circle and connect them with a line segment, um, this is called a chord with an H. Okay, so it doesn't have to be diameter. So I was trying to show, yeah, that's not a diameter there, clearly. It could be a diameter. A diameter is a special type of chord that goes through the center. Um, okay, and then if we draw a line that passes through a... Uh, circle twice, something like this. This is called a secant line. Okay, kind of like a chord, it's just a line that extends infinitely. Um, and then if you have a line segment that um, intersects a circle exactly once, something like this, this would be called a tangent line. Okay. And the place where the line and the circle intersect is called the point of tangency. Okay. All right. So um, you can have uh, lines that are tangent to circles, like I've got here, but you could also have two circles that are tangent to each other, and that just means that they share exactly one point. There's one point of intersection, something like that. Or, you know, you could kind of flip that smaller circle so it's inside. As long as it's got one intersection, those are considered tangent circles. Okay. Concentric circles are circles that have the same center. So if you think about kind of a target, um, those would be concentric circles. So, yeah, these have the same center. All right, moving on. Um, now we've got our first theorem. So this is going to be an if-then. So if um, we've got, um, so this is the tangent line to circle theorem. So that means we're going to have a tangent line. So I'm just going to sketch in a line that intersects that circle once. Okay, so if we've got this situation, then reproduce the picture. Um, then if you connect the point of tangency and the center of the circle, I'm just going to make this a little bigger. So if I connect that, this is a, a radius of the circle, right? But anytime you draw um, a, uh, um, a line segment from a point of tangency to the center, it's going to be perpendicular to the tangent line. So that radius and that tangent line are going to be perpendicular every single time, and that's the tangent line to circle theorem. Okay, um, So we're going to put that to use in these next examples. So um, I'm going to use a black pen just to show that this is supposed to be the given info in this picture. Okay. So, um, yeah, just when you thought we were done with triangles, they're back again. So, um, is um, segment ST tangent to circle P? Okay, usually, uh, like in the drawing above, if a, if a uh, line looks like it's tangent to a circle, you can assume it is. The only exception would be if you're asked if the um, line is actually tangent, like in this example. Okay, so um, is this line segment tangent to the circle? Well, if it was tangent, then I know I'd have a right angle, okay? So another way of asking this question is, um, is that a right angle where I'm pointing there? So I'm just putting right angle, question mark. If it is a right angle, then we've got a tangent line, okay? 
So the way I can check if that's a right angle or not with this given info is just to see if it's a right triangle. Um, if it is a right triangle, then it's going to work with the Pythagorean theorem. So I want to see if a squared plus b squared equals c squared or not. If, it, if they are equal, then I've got a right triangle, and then I've got a tangent line, so my answer is going to be yes. If I get anything else, um, it's going to be a no. So the C would be the hypotenuse. That's the largest side, so that has to be the 37. Okay, I've already um, done the number crunching here, so I'm just going to write this in. Okay, so when you... Uh, plug in those numbers. It does work with the Pythagorean theorem. These are equal. So a squared plus b squared does equal c squared. That means yes, I've got a right triangle, and that means yes, I have a tangent line. So my answer is yes. Okay. So on a quiz or a test, I wouldn't want to just see yes or no. I'd want to see you try out the Pythagorean theorem. Otherwise, I'm, I might think you just flipped a coin or guessed. Okay. All right. So um, why don't you try this next one? Um, so here is the given info, same question. Um, so you can pause the vid video if you like, if you want to try it out. Um, I'm just going to work through it, so we're, the video is not just sitting here with nothing happening. So I would try this out with the uh, Pythagorean theorem. Okay, and then it says that it's equal, but it's not. 116 does not equal 144. It doesn't work with the Pythagorean theorem, so it's either an obtuse or an acute triangle, so um, that means I don't have a right angle there, and it's not a tangent line. Okay. All right, moving on to the next page. Um, try to get on the screen there for a second. Okay. So um, we're going to simplify something. So I'm going to do a little algebra review. Um, so if I'm simplifying this, I want to write it without um, parentheses. So um, a lot of people will do this. They'll just square both terms, but they are wrong. Okay, That's the reason I'm doing this example. It's a super common algebra mistake. Um, you want to think about, um, you can't just square both terms. You want to think about the whole binomial squared. So you want to think about x plus 2 times itself, like so. Okay. So um, when I've got two binomials multiplied together, I want to FOIL them out. Uh, so you don't have to write out those letters, but that's what I'm doing. So the f is for first, thinking x times x. That would be x squared. Outer, the ones on the outside, x times 2 is 2x inner 2 times x, and last would be 2 times 2, and then I just add all the bits together, okay, and then I've got some like terms in the middle there, I can combine those, okay, so you can see um, we end up with x squared plus 4x plus 4, um, and if you just square both terms, you miss out on the middle stuff, the middle term, right, the outer and the inner. Um, so just beware, okay? That's going to come up in this next set of problems. And that's why I was going over that. Okay, so um, next up, I'll put my given info in here. Um, this is going to be 24, and this is going to be 36, all right? This problem says AB is tangent to the circle, solve for R. So this time they're telling us that that line is that line segment is tangent. So right off the bat, I can say, well, then it's going to be perpendicular to the um, radius that it connects to. Okay. So, hey, I've got a right triangle, and that means I can use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. When I use the Pythagorean theorem, be careful. I sometimes see people say, oh, r squared plus 36 squared equals 24 squared. Well, 24 isn't the hypotenuse of that triangle, right? r plus 24 is. So I've got to use that whole distance as the, the hypotenuse, okay? And then it's Pythagorean theorem time.
Okay, A and B are my legs, so I've got R squared and 36 squared. And the hypotenuse is R plus 24. And I want to square that quantity, so I need that in parentheses. Otherwise, I'd just be squaring the 24, okay? So um, 36 squared is 1296. And then I want to make sure I think of this as R plus 24 times itself. Right? That's why I did that algebra review right up there. Okay, um, So, um, I'm going to use FOIL here. So first, R squared. Outer would be 24R. Inner is 24R as well. And then last, 24 times 24 is going to be 576. Okay. Now this looks like a big mess, but it's actually going to clean up pretty quickly, okay? I'm going to want to combine those two because they're like terms. I also want to combine the r squared terms, okay? So let's say, okay, I want to move that to the other side of the equation. Well, I subtract this from that side. Got to do the same thing to the other side of the equation. And then a beautiful thing happens. No more r squareds. Um, so it gets a lot simpler when you subtract r squared from both sides. Okay, and then 24r plus 24r. Okay, next I'm going to subtract 576. And that's going to give me 720 equals 48R. And then divide by 48. And there we go. Okay, um, I'm going to give you one to try just like that. So um, here's the given info. Okay, and try to solve for R. So go ahead and pause the video so you can try it out because I'm about to start working it out. Okay, Pythagorean theorem. R plus 18 is my hypotenuse there. Oh, and yeah, I've got it. It tells me it's tangent, so I know I've got the right angle there. Okay. Um, start um, foiling this. I'm thinking of this as r plus 18 times r plus 18. Outer is 18r, inner is 18r, last is 324. That's 18 times 18. Okay. I'm going to subtract r squared from both sides. Uh, don't bother me anymore. And I'll subtract 324 and divide by 36. Okay. Okay. Next up, external tangents congruence theorem. Um, all right. Sometimes I refer to this as the ice cream cone situation. Kind of looks like an ice cream cone. Okay. This is going to be an if then. So if we have this ice cream cone situation, which really means we have two tangent segments that meet up outside of a circle. Okay, they're both tangent to the same circle. Okay, and all that happens is that the two sides of the ice cream cone are congruent. That's it. That is that theorem. Um, so here's a really straightforward example first. So you can see it's the same picture here. So we might be given something like this. Okay, so we've got our ice cream cone situation here. And hey, the, uh, the two tangent segments are going to be congruent, the sides of the ice cream cone. So that's true. And that means 7x minus 23 equals 61. And then I just have to solve for x, right? So add 23 and then divide by 7. Okay. All right. And then 
Let's try another one. Uh, okay, I'm gonna use black pen for the given info, and then I'll use red pen to work through it. Okay, so let's solve this for x. Um, so, uh, first off, this is not going to be to scale, so I'll just tell you that. Um, um, pretty much all of my diagrams are not to scale because I'm just kind of making up the numbers. Um, all right, so um, what some people will do is they'll just look at this and say, well, those two segments look kind of like the same length, so I'll just say they're equal to each other, so this will be two or something like that. Those don't look the same, but I still see people say, oh, it must be cut in half, so this must be four up there with the x's. Well, that's not necessarily true. Um, but what you can do is you can think about this as three separate ice, ice cream cones, right? We've got an ice cream cone down there, right? And then we've got the cone at the top and the cone on the right side. So we can say that these two segments are going to be congruent, right? Those are, if you think of like this orange ice cream cone there, Okay, and we can do the same thing with the other two cones. So those will be congruent, and these up top will be congruent as well. And it might be hard to see that, but there's supposed to be three dashes in you know, both sides there. Okay, so now I can just go through this and say, oh, if this is two, then this is two. If this is four, then this is four. If this is x, then this is x. Okay. Now, I still don't have x, but now I can get it pretty easily. If I look on this side, I know x plus 2 is going to equal 5. Okay. x plus 2 equals 5. That means x equals 3. And you can see it's not to scale because the 3 looks smaller than 2, but go with the numbers, right? Not with uh, based on looks. Okay. All right. I'm going to give you one to try over here. And again, um, pause the video to try it out. Um, once I've got it written out, because I'm just going to work through it. Um, let's see. Okay, here is the problem, and again, we're solving for x. So go ahead and pause it, because I am starting now. I know those two are congruent, I know these two are congruent, those two are congruent. So again, what I see often is people will set these two congruent with those two congruent instead of just working within one cone for the congruent pieces. Okay, so then I know this is x, I know this is 2, and this is 3, and I don't really need the 2 over there, but I'll just put it in anyways. And now I can see x plus 3 equals 7, so that means x equals 4, and again, clearly not to scale, but that's the correct answer. Okay. All right, one more type of problem. Um, these last ones, I call these um, bike gear problems because um, a lot of times there's there's word problems where there's bicycle gears because the, the diagram um, kind of resembles um, bicycle gears. Um, okay, so I'm gonna zoom in on this first one. Um, okay, and then I'll put the given info in again. So 30 is going to be the distance between points Z and Y. Um, this is, radius over here is going to be 3. X, that's what we're looking for. It's going to be the distance between the centers of the circle. And then this radius is going to be 7. I'm going to put leave a little space, and I'll show you why in a second. But that radius over there is supposed to be 7 units. Okay. All right. So the first thing I want to do is think, well, I do have what appears to be a tangent line up here. It's tangent to both circles. So that means it's going to be perpendicular to the um, radius that it touches. Okay. All right. So this is a trapezoid that I have here. These two lines would be, um, would be parallel, but the other two are not. Okay. So, um, what I can do with this is cut this into a rectangle and a triangle. Okay, so I'm going to do a little surgery. So start your incision always in the center of the smaller circle and just cut it straight across like that. 
and we're just going to say, well, I drew that at a right angle. So if that's at a right angle, if you look at the quadrilateral up here, we've got three of the four angles. So we could figure out what the last angle would be. Um, you could do the n minus 2 times 180 thing, right? And it's going to be a, um, a rectangle. If you've got three right angles, you're going to have a fourth one in the quadrilateral. Okay, So that's good news. Now we have a rectangle. Also, since this is perpendicular here, that means I've got a right angle right there. Okay. All right. So now what I'm going to do is use the uh, some of the properties of rectangles. So in a rectangle, the opposite sides are going to be congruent. So if the top of the rectangle is 30, so is the bottom. And then if the right side is 3, the left side is 3. Okay. Um, so now I've got this right triangle, and my goal is to use the Pythagorean theorem with it. But right now I've only got two of the sides marked, but I can find the last one, right? Because 3 plus blank equals 7, or just 7 minus 3. So this little bit here, and sorry it's so small, but that little piece is 4. Again, not to scale, but that's what that little segment would be based on these numbers. Okay, And now I can use that shaded triangle um, to... Um, I can use the Pythagorean theorem with the shaded triangle to find x. Okay, well, A lot of times what I'll see is people will put the right angle in this corner, in, in the bottom corner of that triangle, instead of at the top one. Because it's hard to tell just looking at them which one would be a right triangle, but you've got to cut your rectangle first, and then that will always lead you to the right angle being in that position. Okay, All right, so um, the hypotenuse here would be x. So I'm using Pythagorean theorem here, right? Okay, I could put that in simple radical form, but I'm not going to bother with these ones. I'm just going to round to the nearest tenth, and that's going to come out to about 30.3. Okay, another th way you can check your work, I mean, at least just to see if maybe you messed up the Pythagorean theorem or something, the hypotenuse should be bigger than the legs, right? So this came out to 30.3 for x, which I was expecting it to be bigger than the 30. It's pretty close to the same size, but it's a little bit bigger. The hypotenuse has to be the largest side, so that makes sense there, okay? And once again, I'm going to give you one to try. So um, once I get the numbers written in, Pause the video. Um, okay, so this time notice the x is at the top. It's in a different position than it was before, but it's still the same process. So go ahead and pause it, try it out, and I'm going to start working on it. There's my right angles. I'm going to cut across like this so that I get a rectangle and a right triangle. Okay, And then if the top of the rectangle is x, so is the bottom. And then if the right side is 5, the left side is 5. And now I can tell that that little gap is going to be 2. Okay, And then Pythagorean theorem again. So this time... 20 is the hypotenuse, not x, right? So be careful there. So I'm going to say x squared plus 2 squared equals 20 squared. Okay, and that's going to come out to about 19.9. And I was expecting it to be smaller than the hypotenuse, and it did turn out smaller than the hypotenuse. Okay. So just a quick way to, to double check your answers. And that is it. I did it. Okay. Um, so I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.